I want my planet back. I always wonder if you probably can't even hear me. I always wonder if I'm picking stuff that YouTube's gonna recognize and then try to slap me with a cease and desist on or a DMCA or a we're gonna ban your account forever. I'm walking the razor's edge, people. Let's be honest, this sounds like everything though. This could be anything. Wait, they're gonna do that thing again. So easy to do. Why didn't I do it? Well, 20 years ago I couldn't have done it. I'm not even sure I could do it today. Anyway, hi! It's uh, Wednesday. It's the day after election day. And I really wanted to listen to that group for some reason. But uh, I got, shouldn't be wasting time. You're dying to hear the story of how the caucus went, and I'm dying to tell you about it. Those of you who are not interested in such things, this is your fair warning to go ahead and click stop right now and leave a comment telling me so. As you know, I live in a district, a precinct. We'll say a precinct because that's what it was last night, where... It's like 90% Democrat, probably. Well, it's probably not 90%, but the people who show up to political things, 90% of those people. So when I go out to the Republican caucus, and again, I'm not a Republican, I'm a registered Libertarian, but the Libertarians do not caucus, despite the best efforts of some Republicans to convince me otherwise. I still showed up at theirs, and I showed up to turn out for Ron Paul because I did it four years ago, and I see no reason not to do it again last night. So I showed up. But the thing about my precinct is part of the University of Minnesota is within the borders of my precinct. So that means we usually get some gung-ho young Republicans who have no clue about coxing but show up because they want to change the system, man. And so, out of the 19 people that showed up for my uh, precinct, 10 of them, not coincidentally, one over half, came out for Ron Paul in the straw vote. Uh, the complete results of the straw vote were tweeted by me yesterday. You can go find them at the Twitter feed if you care. But there were 19 people from our precinct and our it's so small that we put two precincts into the same classroom, so there were ten people from another precinct as well. No, that's important, but it kind of sets the tone, lets you know that there's about a classroom-sized group of people in the room. And I didn't want to be a delegate. I was a delegate four years ago. I considered it a waste of two of the sunny Saturdays, and we don't have a lot of sunny Saturdays in Minnesota but a waste of two perfectly good Saturdays going down and listening to people do political junk for all day, basically. But to get Ron Paul delegates, you got to show up and you got to vote for people who will pledge to support Ron Paul at the convention. So once again, I stood for delegate because out of the three delegates that my precinct was allotted, we didn't have three suckers unless I was one of them.
And even then, we almost only had two suckers, but the last minute we got one of the college students to volunteer. Heartfelt speeches were given. I don't know why. I, I know how it works. You know, if you have one more than half, if you get them all to vote in a block, and say what you will about Ron Paul folks, they're good about taking marching orders when they're provided to them. Speeches are irrelevant because you're going to get the results you want. Of course, my precinct captain, this was his first caucus, and he didn't really know how it went, so he had a whole boilerplate written out, probably provided by the Ron Paul campaign, and he proceeded to read it, and everyone who already was going to vote for Ron Paul anyway nodded their heads because they knew his story, and they knew all the facts, and he wasn't telling them anything he didn't already know. And then we had a law school student give a heartfelt speech written on Romney letterhead for Mitt Romney, and here's a tip. Don't show off your speech so that people can see the Romney letterhead. You really make it sound more like they're your words and not words that have been fed to you. Anyway, it came time for me to give my speech, and I said, look, I'm going to level with you. If you came out for Ron Paul in the straw poll, you need to vote for Ron Paul delegates who will send delegates to the convention, to the next convention, to the national convention who will support Ron Paul. So in order to do that, you need to vote for these three people, myself, Noah, Trevor. That's it. That's basically how it works. And I sat down. And the thing is, that was probably the most effective speech because it was, you know, here are marching orders to get the result you want. You need to vote for these three people. So when the time came, one person left after the straw poll, so we had 18 people there. Uh, 15 people voted for the heartfelt speech precinct captain guy. 12 people voted for me. 10 people voted for Trevor. So... We got all the Ron Paul people, and somehow I got two people that weren't Ron Paul people, and the other guy got five people that weren't Ron Paul people, so that worked out pretty well. The Ernest Romney person who showed up four years ago for Romney finished fourth. She's probably gutted because she actually works at the Capitol and actually volunteers and actually blogs and actually Twitters and was on a flight to CPAC this morning. She's first alternate. She got six votes. Uh, five votes for fifth place, for sixth place, and one guy who didn't seem like he belonged there and was kind of borderline racist and kind of borderline sexist nominated himself and voted for himself. He got one vote. Now, pretty simple, right? It takes an hour and a half to get from beginning to end. Of course, you got to pledge allegiance. That's understandable. We can let that go. But... When it came time for the straw poll, because there were two precincts in the room, they didn't divide the votes up correctly, so we all had to vote twice. Fine. These things happen. Speeches, again, way too long, especially the guy who had a lot of tattoos and had, I kid you not, a, a bull ring in his nose. And he was probably in his 50s or 60s, and you could tell he was an ex-military guy, but... Man, he gave the longest, most irrelevant speech. He used the word mulatto when talking about Obama. That was really a giveaway. Anyway, I don't know who he came out for, but I suspect he was the guy who wrote in a Democrat's name when it came time for the straw poll. I wonder if I got his vote. Could be. I don't know. Anyhow, I did get out in time to catch... Pretty much the second half of the fourth quarter against the Kings. And apparently it was a pretty comfortable lead until I got there. And then the Kings tightened it up. And they tied twice, but they never led. The Wolves led the whole way. And Ricky Rubio almost caused a disaster by missing his shot and allowing the Kings that final three-point shot to go up by one. But they missed. And the Wolves won by two. Thank goodness. They're playing tonight. Second end of a back-and-back. -back. They're in Memphis. I don't know. It's going to be tough. We'll see. It should be on, uh, I think it's on TV at 7, and so we'll watch it then. Kevin Love stayed home. He actually tweeted his location earlier this afternoon and gave out swag to anybody that showed up. Uh, I was working. I was here. Sorry. Here's to you. But I think that's about everything that I meant to express to you today. And I see we are coming up on 10 minutes, so I will cut this short and say thank you once again for spending another 10 minutes with me. Please feel free to give me feedback, and it will be addressed tomorrow, probably. Goodbye.